All right, we're back, everybody, as we uh, join together once again on a Monday where we've had a, a kind of an inter- well, a very interesting weekend uh, weather-wise. As the cold that we first talked about back on the 13th of October, 13 days ago, is uh, now in place across the heartland of the United States. It's made its way through Canada and up in that area. It's beginning to be eaten away a little bit by some Chinook conditions, as most Arctic air masses in the middle part of uh, this continent eventually do come to their demise via the Chinook coming off the higher terrain that for a time keeps it dammed in off to the east. But then once the flow turns around from the west, we get the downsloping, and then those places that were coldest yesterday end up turning around a huge swing temperature-wise. There's some uh, 100-plus degree temperature recoveries uh, on the record through Montana and parts of Colorado as those Chinooks, even South Dakota, with the downslopes off the uh, off. Uh, uh, the mountains in and around Rapid City, the Black Hills, have seen some incredible temperature recovery. We'll start with this. Uh, let's go overseas, and we will look mostly uh, or or thusly at uh, at the aurora. This is played in real time, and I have seen a lot of aurora in my life, and I have never seen it this active. This is real time with the cell phone, just having a look outside. You can see the bottom of that curtain right through there where the blues, the violets are just dancing the uh the, the sun is wide open the coronal holes are pointed at us the earth's magnetic field is down and will remain down for decades to come so these aurora these from uh, norway in the particular uh, situation uh this is the big dipper right there as we pan over you can actually see there's the handle and then we'll see the dipper come into into shape uh oh, you see there it is there it is so uh, he's got a pretty good camera to be able to uh a, you know, absorb the light and, and uh, pick it up. All right, great reset coming. We've been talking about it. We've been shown it. We've been walked into it on leashes guide you, but it's something we're going to talk a little bit about as an aspect of disclosure coming up on another perspective in an hour time. All right, latest operational run of the GFS suggesting that now Hurricane Zeta could be a solid hurricane at landfall in the central Gulf Coast. And if it gets there in the first place, the storm surge will be an issue. Think late uh, or Nate back in 2017. There's the ice and uh, snow happening in the Southern Plain states, but we're still anticipating uh, that storm to arrive. And then this was Denver last night as the wind was blowing, the snow was falling. Ultimately, eight inches was about typical of the places, about 10, which is close to what we had here in the San Luis Valley, even though out down here it was very, very late getting started, but it has snowed much today. We've got a little bit of sun outside now, but it's uh, 27 degrees or about minus three and a half Celsius. So uh, cold enough that it's not going anywhere. Quick look at the thunder snow outside of the office uh, of the uh, National Weather Service in Amarillo, Texas. And uh, boom, boom, boom. That's always a little exciting. And again, the, these snowfalls, these snow crystals are crystals. You get those swirling and you end up with some kind of electrical current. And it only stands to reason that lightning is going to be a result. The aurora, this time underneath it. This will happen in the northern hemisphere. This will happen in the southern hemisphere. We're all on this big rotating magnet called Earth. And things are happening we're gonna this is gonna be a big big thing all right uh reed tamir the uh, forever storm chaser up on the continental divide and uh roads are icy roads are slick uh the dogs not so much a concern as you get up to wellington east of fort collins where they just a week ago in fact just 72 hours ago were you know coughing and wearing masks because of the fires the fire situation has been greatly assisted but it is so cold that the firemen have had to essentially winterize their gear, lest the pumps and the hoses and all of that uh, hardware that they've, you know, has kept everyone uh, safe uh, be frozen. When you go from 70 degrees or 21, 22 uh, Celsius down to minus 18 Celsius or about zero Fahrenheit, it's a big abrupt change, and not all the equipment will survive that kind of a uh, uh, disruption. There's some of the record lows. We will get an updated look at this uh, across the western states, and some of these are records by monumental margins. This particular one from NBC Montana at uh, 20 below in Mon- uh, Bozeman, Montana this morning, whereas the old record low was 11 back in 2002. That is a smashing of the record by 31 degrees, nearly 30 degrees for Butte. 
so this is this is a situation with this kind of cold where there's a lot of trees that had to have prepared for winter. They got a couple of frosts ahead of time, but was it enough? Otherwise, you see the sap not being drawn out of the system and the trunks exploding, and then the tree has uh, has uh, ha- has very little chance of recovery. So four three weather stories. Uh, Zeta is the one that uh, will have our attention as we get to probably Sunday night and into Monday, uh, or even, wow, even that long. Uh, yeah. Oh, why am I thinking it's Friday? All right. Towards the end of the week, about 72 hours out, we'll see that Zeta making landfall at some point in Louisiana and still a continuation of the snow in eastern New Mexico at this point in time. All right. This is an interesting aurora forecast. This is from spaceweathernews.com. And this is where we have aurora that are already in place in the northern hemisphere. Down south, it's just as bright with the uh, midnight hour just passing uh uh, it looks like uh, South Africa and coming up on the uh, the, the prime meridian, uh, that's where the heat of the aurora is. So these will bulge out to the north just as these aurora will be drawn southward as we see relevant uh, filaments or other weaknesses within the uh, within the magnetic field of Earth. It's going to be a very, very cool winter up north with all the aurora that we're going to see. All right, from uh, the Interagency Fire Center, wildland fires uh, activity uh, was moderated over the weekend. Uh, one new large fire was reported in Arizona. Firefighters continue to work towards the containment goals of the East Troublesome Fire. This one in Colorado has been an epic, epic fire. They have gone from uh, uh, living in their homes to evacuation to are there any homes there because there are many places where they haven't even gone in or been able to get in because first of fire, then of wind, and then of snow to be able to go in and assess the situation for a lot of folks that have been evacuated and were just underneath 200,000 acres with that particular uh, fire, which is right in here. All right, got this image up, guys, because I'm looking at all of the snow on the ground from North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, Nebraska, into Kansas, out into Colorado, through Wyoming. You get east of the Wind Rivers or south of the Wind Rivers, and the snow uh, kind of thins out. Same stories you get in the Uinta Basin in Utah. The snow thins out, but that doesn't mean some of their central mountains also didn't have a little snow as well. But it is much, much colder off to the east. And this will help the drought situation. Undoubtedly, is it going to be enough? I'm not quite sure, but I want to go to here. And these are some of the nighttime lows. Actually, this was this morning's forecast lows, and we'll go to tomorrow's, where uh, Cheyenne's still at about six below Scotts Bluff at 11 below zero, uh, 16 in Burley, Idaho. So there's just a lot of uh, very, very chilly lows uh, in place. And as far as cold highs, this, uh, you know, places that did not even get above 15 on the front range of Colorado, 17 in Goodland, Kansas, even into central and western Texas, highs not climbing above the 30s for uh, for the afternoon readings. And for some of these locations, this was the first freeze so far of the season. All right, still managed to get to 104 at Rio Grande Village, Texas yesterday. And look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six locations at 22 degrees below zero or, well, maybe not col- uh, colder, but uh, a couple of spots in Wyoming, Montana, and Utah uh, taking those honors. And what we're looking at is Zeta down into the uh, down to the deep, deep uh, into the, I guess it's the Western Caribbean would be the, the best place to uh, well, call this off the coast of uh, Mexico, the Yucatan. But Zeta still with, as a minimal hurricane, 80 miles an hour, anticipated to strengthen as it kind of shoots the gap between the Yucatan and Western Cuba, and then probably weaken as the waters are uh, enough cooler as we approach the coast. We've had some some storms up here already. We've got the cold. Let's go, yes, just go to the surface map right here because I, I want to see where we are uh, as the cold air. No, we've got a stationary front here along the Gulf Coast, and then a warm front as the south winds are trying to pick up back up, but the, but it's cold. I mean, that this Arctic high ex- extends all the way from Nebraska through Wyoming and then up into the Pacific Northwest where frost and very chilly readings in Puget Sound uh, you know, on through the day. But what this does is these highs set up across the Great Basin is it sets up a very, very strong pressure gradient through these gaps in California. California. This is where the fire danger, the fire risk, the risk of explosive fire development and rapid movement will happen, will be in California as this very strong Santa Ana and offshore flow, you know, you know takes place. That's what's going to happen. Uh, snows in New Mexico, southern New Mexico, some showers, and then a little bit of ice 
This ice underway south of Oklahoma City across Tulsa. And they've had maybe a quarter of an inch, but this is the first frozen precip of the season. So what a way to begin. Not even a little bit of snow to let people know it's there, but it's just this thick coating of, of ice. That ice is on trees. It's on antennas. That ice is, is big. And I, undoubtedly, we'll get some pictures for you come tomorrow. And uh, the snow still hanging out in New Mexico, so that's that's good. They could all of these places out west need this precipitation. This is a rather slow moving event. The deep low, uh, let's go back to the beginning. The deep low swinging through uh, the southwestern states and then just kind of hanging around, scooping up a ton of moisture in Texas, Oklahoma. So we'll see some very healthy precip totals. Uh, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, on top of the snows that have already fallen across Nebraska. So this is going to aid those farmers in a really, really great way. Uh, let me go to precip here instead of uh, dealing with snow, because then we can be more inclusive and uh, talk about the whole area and run out some totals. So this, these, these folks uh, in Oklahoma and Kansas, they're on the edge of the drought. The drought is definitely severe to the West, but we're looking at one, two, two and a half, some three inch totals. So this goes a long way to really assisting uh, agriculture and some uh, drought stressed uh, operations and trees and shrubs and, and so forth as we uh, begin to put all the vegetation to bed. But even over the course of this next two weeks, there's not much that happens from Northern California through the central Northern Rockies, the Great Basin, and out, all the way out across the Northern Plains. It's dry as she goes through about the 11th of November. Uh, we'll, we'll see that little injection of, of moisture from Zeta that'll hit, uh, cent well, probably eastern Louisiana, at least that's where it's modeled to go now. But the biggest, heaviest precipitation is, uh, is the copious amounts falling along the British Columbia uh, the British Columbia uh, the Rockies and a lot of Pacific water coming in. They hit 14,000 foot peaks. Most of that water comes out. Good to see you guys on there. We are at Zeta. Look at that. Uh, yeah, this we're, we're deep into deep into the Greek alphabet. We've got a ways to go. I would imagine that we'll probably have two more storms. The models are kind of, uh, I don't want to say inconclusive, but they do bring about another one, though, at least the one this morning did. Let's see if this spins it up, uh, hits it across Cuba here. But then we've got a deep trough swinging in, so that may or may not uh, turn into an event. But nonetheless, this ridge that's had been in place through the western states, that ridging shape just doesn't really want to let go. It'll take a beating, and then it just bounces right back up. 594 heights right there. That's midsummer. That's midsummer. So where we have seen snow, where we have had the record cold temperatures, it may last another three days. Not the record cold, but the cool weather. And then we'll go through a process of melting it all off, getting that moisture in the uh, in the uh, back in the soils, and then a good chunk of it because it's dry this time of year will be lost to evaporation. I'm ready for a bit of snow here. Are you, Karen? Are you? Well, it's La Nina. So if if that analogy is going to uh, remain in place, then the East tends to do fairly well. It is not a, it is not a guarantee. It is not a one-to-one a -one correlation. And I have to default some of that to being uh, some geoengineering that we can play with the weather a bit. So what have what may have been a classic La Nina setup has to deal and has to endure some kind of a, some kind of a, um, interruptions from the geoengineering aspect. Florida needs to take one for the team. Yeah, give it to Florida, right? Right. Lafayette's had enough. Louisiana has been just brutalized this summer by the, the number of storms, the sheer number of just uh, been epic. All right. Uh, we, I want to talk about disclosure coming up on another perspective at the top of the hour, 45 minutes or so. It'll be at least a two part show. We will be able to talk about the basics of disclosures in the next, uh, you know, between six and maybe six thirty-five, six forty here, and then we'll we'll pick it up on Wednesday. But there's so many aspects to if we were to get a true disclosure, something that me standing, you know, in my coming up on mid fifties and seeing the Jetsons presented to us as, as a kid, that how in the intervening five decades have we not? had this come to fruition. We've got AI, we've got beginnings of developing robots, but there's a lot of other tech that were tantalizing that uh, the cartoon people like the Simpsons presented us because it was easy enough to figure out that we would eventually end up there. It's just, where has it been? 
where is this disclosure? When is that going to happen? It, will it be all at once? Or we do, have, do we have to wait for Hollywood to present disclosure a movie at a time? And then when does it actually begin to make an effect in our lives? So I want to talk about the disclosure up at six o'clock. And, uh, and I want your feedback because we all have things where we would like to see the secrets revealed. And is humanity mature enough to use these texts in the best possible way? Have we grown up enough? Or do we need to have a wholesale change of leadership before this kind of technology is released to the public? So that's uh, that's where I want to go at six o'clock. Uh, it's 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 a topic that has fascinated me probably since I could uh, read sci-fi as a kid. All right, we'll talk about uh, disclosure coming up at six o'clock on another perspective, uh, and after that, we will uh, round up all the record lows that happened across uh, the states from this particular Arctic outbreak tomorrow on uh, on Scott's weather. All right, see you in about uh, forty-five minutes. Have a great night, and uh, I'll go change. Catch you soon. Keep looking up.